What's up everyone, we're back again with another Final Cut Pro tutorial and this time I'm talking about how you can edit faster in Final Cut Pro with these 10 time saving tips. There are some useful tips in this video that'll hopefully be helpful to you no matter what your skill level is. So let's get into it. When I worked at a video post-production house, I often had crazy deadlines to get things done before sending material to clients or for broadcast. And as a result, I've always tried to find ways to do certain editing actions faster, but also to find creative ways to speed up repetitive and time-consuming tasks. With that said, let's get into the first item on this list of time-saving tips to help you edit faster in Final Cut Pro. Number one, use shortcuts. I love using shortcuts because I can instantly perform an edit function or access a section in Final Cut Pro without wasting time navigating through menus to find what I'm looking for. Let me give you a few quick examples of shortcuts that'll help you save some time. You can trim the beginning of a clip using Alt and the open square bracket or the end of a clip using Alt and the closed square bracket. And I find this really useful when cutting silences out of talking head clips or for trimming anything to my playhead. Another shortcut is one to set a clip to an exact duration by hitting Ctrl D and then typing in the value, let's say five seconds and zero zero frames and hitting return. That's a nice easy way to do it when you need a clip to be an exact duration. You can also use shortcuts to access different panels within Final Cut Pro, like Command 6 to show your color inspector or Command Shift 7 to show and hide your multicam viewer. I made a video quite some time ago called 41 Final Cut Pro Shortcuts, which I'll link to in the description below if you want to check that out. I've actually added a bunch of new shortcuts to my daily workflow, so I should probably update that video. If that's something that would interest you guys, please let me know in the comments down below as well. Okay, let's move on to number two on the list, which is assigning roles to your clips. Assigning roles is a way of classifying different kinds of clips, and you're basically telling Final Cut Pro that these clips are dialogue, these are sound effects, these are music tracks, these are titles, etc. You can also add and edit roles as you see fit, but for this tutorial, I'll just work with the default roles in Final Cut Pro. You can simply select any clip, right click, head on over to assign audio roles or assign video roles. This is helpful from a visual perspective because you can easily see where certain sections of your edit are, especially if you work on larger or more complicated edits. If you look at this example of a TV show that I work on, you can easily see where my dialogue is in blue, where my music is in green, my sound effects in cyan, my titles in purple, and my custom graphics in orange. Using roles, you can navigate more efficiently around your timeline, but you can also make batch edits. Let's say your client says, please send me a version without the graphics. You can simply go into your timeline and select all the orange clips in this case by command clicking on all the clips and using the shortcut V to hide them. Number three on the list to help you edit faster in Final Cut Pro is to create presets. This is especially useful if you find yourself repeating a lot of the same tasks over and over again. To create a preset, you first need to add all the necessary plugins and adjust the settings as needed, one example of what I do for these YouTube videos is to create a preset that has a LUT applied to it, a curves plugin, an EQ, a compressor, and volume fades on either side of the clip. Once you're happy with your settings, head over to the inspector window and click on Save Effects Preset. Give it a name, choose what category you want to save it under, and then choose all the attributes that you want to save. For this preset, I would select all the effects as well as the volume, and then I would tick this maintain timing box to keep the duration of the volume fades the same, no matter what the duration of the clip is. Once that's done, you can simply drag and drop the preset onto any of your clips. That brings me to my next time saving tip, number four, which is to copy and paste attributes. Once I've added my preset to my clip, I might make a few adjustments. Let's say I recorded this clip a little darker than normal, so I want to brighten it up. I'll go into my curves here and adjust it slightly. Now, I don't want to do that to every clip, which is what I'd have to do if I just dropped this preset onto every clip, but instead, you can copy and paste the attributes from one clip to another by hitting Command C to copy and then Command Shift V to paste the attributes to another clip or selection of clips. You can select the attributes you want to paste and hit OK. Next up on the list is number five, which is to use the Range Selector tool to add and manipulate keyframes. I use this little trick most often when I'm mixing audio and it saves me a lot of time. Let me show you how I use it. Use the shortcut R to activate the range selection tool and let's make a selection on this music track. Then I'll drag the volume line up or down and you'll see how Final Cut Pro creates four keyframes here. You can switch back to the selection tool by using the shortcut A and adjust the keyframes if you need to. Let's say you need to move the selection of keyframes backwards or forwards in time. Instead of doing it one by one, you can activate the range selection tool and select this entire range of keyframes and then drag them to another position on the track. If you're enjoying these tips so far and you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and say hi in the comments down below. 
There are plenty more Final Cut Pro videos coming that you don't want to miss out on. Also, I have a course on the basics of Final Cut Pro that is jam-packed with info on how Final Cut Pro works, how to use the different editing tools, along with a bunch of other editing tips. So if that's something that you're interested in, I'll leave a link in the description down below. So feel free to check that out. Okay, back to the list of time-saving tips that'll help you edit faster in Final Cut Pro. Number six is to use adjustment layers. Using adjustment layers is another way of applying the same effects to different clips like we did before with copying and pasting attributes, but adjustment layers can take things a step further. If you don't know what an adjustment layer is, it's a title plugin that you drop over your footage and any effect you apply to it will affect the clips underneath. If you don't have one, I mentioned where to get one for free in my 10 best free plugins for Final Cut Pro video, which I'll link to down below. I'm going to grab the preset I created earlier for my talking head footage and drop it on this adjustment layer. You'll see how it affects the footage underneath it, and I'll extend this to cover all the talking head footage on the timeline. This preset won't work for the B-roll I have, so let's drop a new adjustment layer on top of these clips and I'll do a rough color grade on it. Maybe with a curve here, like that. I'll play with the saturation as well. And let's select the adjustment layer and head on over to the crop section in the inspector window and crop the top and the bottom to create a letterbox look. To distinguish this adjustment layer from the other one, I'll right click on this one and rename it to talking head. And I'll right click on this one and rename it to B-roll. If you're using rolls, you can even color code these so it's easier to differentiate between them. Now, if I have more B-roll that I want to add these effects to, I can just hold down Alt and click and drag this adjustment layer over the other clips and adjust the duration to fit. This is a quick way to do a rough grade or apply the same effects to a bunch of different clips. Next up is number seven, playback in double speed. This one might not work for all footage, but I find it really useful for talking head footage. Instead of just hitting spacebar and playing the footage back at normal speed, you can use the J, K and L keys to control playback. The shortcut J will play in reverse, K will pause playback and L will play forward. If you tap L more than once, you can increase the playback speed. Tapping L twice will play back in double speed and it looks and sounds like this. If you tap L more than once, you can increase the playback speed. Tapping L twice will play back in double speed and it looks and sounds like this. This is great when you're going through footage that is just a lot of talking, like a presentation, an interview, or a talking head video like this. Tapping L or J for that matter more than twice increases the playback speed by three and four times, and that's way too fast to hear what's going on, but playing back in double speed will definitely help you edit faster. Number eight on our list of time-saving tips is to use the search feature. You can access the search feature over here by clicking on index or by using the shortcut Command F. Let me show you a couple of ways that this feature is useful. Let's say you have a title that repeats throughout an edit, in this case, a title with my name on it, and it has a mistake that I need to fix. The small b should be a capital B. Instead of scrolling through my edit to find each instance of the title, I can just search for Brad and all the titles appear here in this list. If I click on the first one, my playhead will jump to that title and I can go in and fix the title. I'll then click on the next one and quickly fix that one too. I can run through the edit making all of these changes much faster than if I had to search through the timeline manually. By doing it this way, you're also less likely to miss one of the titles. Another use for the search function is to make certain adjustments to multiple clips at the same time, and this works when you combine the use of roles. Let's assume you want to drop the level of all the sound effects in this edit. If you right click on one of these sound effects and hover over audio roles, you can see that this is classified as an effect. So if I go back over to the index section and I search for effects, all of my sound effects show up. I'll select the first one and hit Command A to select them all, and you'll see that they're all selected here in this list, but also on the timeline. Now I can drop the level of all these effects using the shortcut Control and the minus key. This will drop the audio by one dB at a time. So I'll tap that about six times to drop the volume by six dBs. You can also use Control and the plus key to increase the volume. Up next is number nine, make proxies. If your computer is struggling to edit and playback footage either due to the 4K footage on your timeline, a codec that is a CPU hog, or just the fact that your computer is not the beast that you wish it was, making proxies before you start your edit will really help speed things up. If you don't know what they are, proxies are lower resolution versions of your footage that are optimized for better performance during playback. You can make proxies by selecting all of the clips in your browser window, or you can click on your event over here and head over to File, Transcode Media, Check Proxy Media, and hit OK. You'll see the proxies being made in your background tasks window, and when it's done, you can switch to proxy view by heading over to the viewer window, clicking on the drop down arrow and selecting proxies. Depending on how much footage you have, creating proxies might take a while, so I'd recommend doing it well before you plan on starting your edit if possible. Don't forget to switch back to your optimized or original media before you export your final project. And the last item on my list of time-saving tips to help you edit faster in Final Cut Pro is number 10, export frequently used elements via XML. 
I find this trick to be really useful when I work on my YouTube videos or when I work with a specific client on a long-term basis and I often reuse the same graphics, titles, sound effects or anything like that. I'll use this channel as an example. I have a timeline here called Brad and Donna Intro and Outro and I have various versions of our intro for different videos, our outro, sound effects and other overlays that I use often here on this timeline. With all the things I need on one timeline, I just head over to File, Export XML and save it somewhere that's easy to access. Next time I start working on a new video, instead of looking for all the graphics I need, assigning roles, making adjustments to the volume or anything else like that, I can just import the XML by going to File, Import, XML and import that timeline into my library. Now I can grab any one of these clips and use them in my new project. Out of all of these time-saving tips, I'd love to know which one you think is going to be the most useful to you and which one you think you'll incorporate into your workflow. Let me know in the comments down below. That's all for this video. I hope you found it helpful and if you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell and I'll catch you guys in the next one.